If you're wondering why words like woke or terms like critical race theory suddenly became prominence just out of nowhere, well, that is the power of propaganda. Because when you have mainstream news outlets like Fox News working in tandem with Republican politicians and online outlets like the Daily Wire, for example, they're able to have a very large influence on broader political discourse to the point where they can actually alter our perception of reality and elevate the salience of virtually any issue. But their most recent catchphrase, of course, is groomer, which they've been using specifically to describe LGBTQ plus people, really any and everything LGBTQ plus related, and even anyone who supports them. But what's especially nefarious about their bastardization of that word in particular is that groomer is an important word with real meaning. An actual groomer is an adult who cultivates a friendship with a child with the intent to exploit or abuse them sexually. And conservatives have conflated that predatory and criminal behavior with any and everything LGBTQ+, but their use of the word in this context is very inconsistent. Some use grooming as a synonym for indoctrination, whereas others use it to refer to sexually predatory behavior or sometimes they'll sloppily use both versions interchangeably. Case in point. How do you feel about indoctrination by people that are educators? I don't like that at all. There's just two diff very different things. Right. And if you want to tell me that they're the same thing, I say, f*** you. Because right. they're not. Because there's a lot of f***ing crazy people that wind up being teachers. Someone said to me that, um, or I've read this, uh, not all, you know, the term groomer, a lot of people don't like that term online. They're very upset, yeah, yeah. but they're real. Right. There are groomers. You, you don't like it? Do you not like it because you don't want children to be groomed? Or do you not like it because it's a pejorative that's used against the left? Which is, I think, more likely. Yeah. But here's what's more important. Not have people groom your fucking kids. <laughs> but the problem, Joe, is that when you say grooming, you really mean indoctrination there, which you're also using incorrectly, by the way. But to conflate grooming with indoctrination, that's a problem because you're muddying the waters. Conservatives have called the Declaration of Pride Month grooming. They've also called Drag Queen Story Hour grooming. They've called family-friendly pride events grooming. They've even called literal rainbow clothing grooming. So in each of these instances, it's unclear which version of grooming they're actually using. Do they think that Drag Queen Story Hour is an attempt to indoctrinate children into the LGBTQ plus lifestyle? Not that that's possible, but is that what they think? Or do they think a drag queen in the presence of children is akin to nudity or porn in the presence of children? You don't know because they've muddied the waters so much to the point where people have been primed to think that any and everything queer related is inappropriate for children. But they don't apply that same standard to straight couples. So if there were two gay men that kissed in front of kids, they would probably call that grooming. But would they say the same for a straight couple? Is that not the sexualization of children? Is that, that not inappropriate for children? They have a different set of standards, and they are very unclear with the language that they use. And look, this whole think of the kids thing, it's not a new argument, right? The whole think of the kids argument has been used to justify the denial of civil rights for virtually every single marginalized group. The problem, however, is that their supposed concern for kids is cynical. And whenever they use it to justify the denial of human rights to other people, it's always cynical, right? And we know this because if they genuinely cared about kids, LGBTQ plus people in this instance would not be their main focus. Now, let me tell you why that would be the case. A large group of Catholics ironically marched towards the Dodgers Stadium chanting, save our children in response not to the child sex abuse in their own church, but in response to the LA Dodgers inviting, then disinviting, then finally reinviting the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, which is a satirical LGBTQ LGBTQ plus group for those of you who don't know. Now, I feel like I'm stating the obvious, but if these Catholics actually cared about saving the children, why the fuck are they not marching against their own institution? The Attorney General of Illinois released a report detailing actual sexual abuse of 1,900 minors by 450 priests spanning decades. Hey, Catholics, the call is coming from within the house, but it's not just Catholics because in 2022, Newsweek put together an entire list 
list of pastors charged with child sexual abuse just in the state of Texas alone. And according to a Southern Baptist Convention document, more than 700 Baptist leaders have been accused of child sexual abuse between 2000 and 2009. And stories of their abuse are very common. For example, in June, a Christian missionary was sentenced to 25 years for sexually abusing a preschooler and transmitting an STD to them. Just absolutely monstrous behavior. But they don't talk about this. Where's the Christians and Catholics marching against that? But it's not just Christians and Catholics because the Arizona Supreme Court recently ruled that the Mormon Church can refuse to answer questions or turn over documents under a state law that exempts religious officials from having to report child sex abuse if they learn of the crime during a confessional setting. And this ruling came in response to the Church of Latter-day Saints refusing to turn over disciplinary records of a clergyman who was uh, posting videos of himself abusing his daughters online. I think that the actual law enforcement officials should know how you discipline this individuals, given that this is a crime, and they need to know that the punishment meets the crime, because that is a heinous crime, one of the worst things that you can do to a human being, not to mention your own child. But get this, quote, an Associated Press investigation of clergy privilege shows it exists in 33 states and that the LDS Church, often joined by the Catholic Church, Jehovah's Witnesses, and other faiths, have successfully lobbied against attempts to reform or eliminate it. In other words, religious organizations have systematically abused children for decades, and and they've also lobbied to maintain legal exemptions that let them shield their own from actual criminal repercussions. Clergy privilege is what they're calling it. Yet, conservatives are pointing at LGBTQ plus people as if they're the problem. It's just, it's a sick joke, right? But it's not just religious organizations. I'd be remiss to just talk about their abuse because the entire fucking West Virginia State Police Department is currently under investigation for sexual misconduct with dozens of people, including minors, previously in their Junior Trooper Academy program planning to sue them. But nothing that I'm telling you is shocking if you've been paying attention, right? But are conservatives going to yell groomer the next time they see a Blue Lives Matter flag? Are they going to yell groomer at someone wearing a cross? Well, of course not. The reason conservatives hyper-focus on LGBTQ plus people but turn a blind eye to actual instances of systemic child abuse is because they don't actually care about children. They just hate queer people. And also because, let's be real, they probably want to, at least some do, give actual pedophiles a little bit of a pass, create a diversion for them so they can continue abusing children. And it's not unreasonable to think that because... A lot of these conservatives, oftentimes the one who the ones who scream the loudest about this, they've made some very suspicious statements themselves. And there's a lot of examples out there. Justin Horowitz of Media Matters put together a massive list of right wing media figures history of either defending pedophiles or sexualizing children themselves. And after seeing just a few examples, I can't help but think that they're probably projecting when they talk about so-called groomers in the LGBTQ plus community, because after all, every accusation is a confession, we've learned, right? So it's not unreasonable to think, hmm, maybe they're hiding something by focusing on this and pointing the finger at LGBTQ plus people. But with that being said, here's just a couple of, of examples provided to us within that article. Yeah, I gotta find, I gotta find my 16 year old wife. Probably when I turn 30 or something. Because here's the thing. I don't want to be like, let's say I get married to an 18-year-old now. Six-year age difference. When I turn 40, she's going to be 34. Nick made these comments about a 16, 16-year-old woman and a um, 16-year-old wife, that he wants a 16-year-old wife. And I think that's normal. That's fair enough, uh, obviously. But we really need to shoot lower than that. I don't think you need to wait till the girl's 16. I think you should have forced child marriage is what I support. Forced child marriage. Um, You can ask the girl if she likes a guy or whatever, and you can take that 
into account in your decision making, but the girl should be forcibly married. Obviously, I'm not promoting quote unquote pedophilia, which is a term that gets thrown around, which I mean, it, it's really a practice of homosexuals, but it uh, gets thrown around at people who talk about so called underage girls. You're a hall. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck. Know about me. When the Duggars came out and their son had molested their child, you more or less said that you felt sorry for their parents. Their parents let it continue for a You don't know, you ma'am. Know. I'm sorry, but let no. me just stop you. No, let me stop you because you're accusing me of supporting child abuse. Yes, I'm going to take you on on that because that hurts my feelings. And it's I'm going absolutely to it. Wrong. It hurts my feelings too well, that somebody you. like you are that running is. for the American public. Ma'am, let me tell you something. You have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know that family, and I do. Judge Roy Moore had sexual contact with a 14-year-old girl when he was in his early 30s. Three other women say that Moore also approached them when they were teens. They want to destroy Judge Roy Moore, and you know why? They want to take your voice away. And in the Catholic Church, you have um, you have some cases where uh, like cases involving Cardinal McCarrick. You hear about Cardinal McCarrick and, and the controversy surrounding him. Now, there are accusations that he molested children. So, you know, that's in that category. But then, but then a lot of the accusations you hear about McCarrick and, and also with other, you know, some of these other things as well. These are, in some cases, he's having sex with seminarians. These are grown men who he allegedly lured into bed and then had sex with. But as a grown man, if you let another man lure you into bed and then you willingly, with no resistance, engage in sex acts with him, does that belong in the same category as the 12-year-old kids who are raped by men twice their size? I think clearly it doesn't. Well, actually, rape. he's not in prison for that. He didn't. Warren Jeffs didn't marry underage girls. No, he, he's in. He's in prison for facilitation of child rape. Whatever the hell that means. That means he's that in prison. <laughs> he's in prison because he's weird and unpopular, no. and he has a different <laughs> lifestyle that other people find creepy. No. Um, it's more of a public service announcement than anything else. Uh, at the office this week, we had a situation where one of the techs came across some pictures on a customer's computer that were of the. Um, child pornography variety. I, I don't really know if there's any tech way to put that. But um, the customer was reported and uh, subsequently arrested, I believe, uh, as last that I heard. Uh, and is even more serious. However, I've never known a tech in my life um, that ever took anything other than like videos or music off computers. But the, po the point of this, this video is just to remind people that, you know, as techs, um, we read your emails, so to speak. Um, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it happens. Um, so if you have things that you don't want computer text to see, you know, you should delete them or rename them that you don't want text to look at. Um, you know, maybe change the folder name when you take it in if you can. Or, you know, I, I'm not condoning it. I, I don't think it's it's necessarily right. I believe it's an invasion of privacy. But uh, and that's really why, you know, I don't really do it anymore. But I certainly did back in the day. And, you know, I, I there's not a tech in the business out there right now, right now that doesn't do it. it. happens. So if you have these sorts of things, remember that computer techs do uh, look at other things on your computer. It's, it's Sometimes it's by accident. Sometimes it's by curiosity. But just keep in mind when you take things in, uh, or boredom to get your you know you take your computer and you get it fixed uh, people look around on it and uh, you shouldn't make it real easy for people to find things you know that last video by the quartering wasn't actually featured in Justin Horowitz's compilation uh, but I had to include it because the quartering is another individual who has suggested that queer people are groomers or pedophiles but he right there just gave child predators a little bit of a PSA, as he called it, to hide the child abuse that's on their computers. Counter argument, don't tell them this, let them get caught. It's just, they, they are so despicable, they genuinely don't care. They don't know how hypocritical they sound, how suspicious they look. 
Now, again, those are just a few examples. That video was not an exhaustive list. If you want the full stories, I'll link to that article down below. But I mean, as you saw from those videos, they varied from outright support for child marriage to defending some of these pedophiles. Matt Walsh, for example, tried to minimize the child sexual abuse of a Catholic priest by saying, oh, well, some of his victims were grown men. But why would you feel the need to defend him? I mean, grown men, believe it or not, can be the victims of sexual abuse as well. But why go out of your way to defend him? Furthermore, that conversation that he had with the camera took place within the context of him defending female predators who have sex with teenage boys. So, yeah. But there's more. Ian Miles Chong has repeatedly advocated for the age of consent to be lowered. Turning Point USA recently held their pastor's summit with a registered sex offender. And the list goes on and on and on. So keeping in mind the fact that many conservatives who accuse innocent LGBTQ plus people of being groomers for simply just existing in the presence of a child, they A, never condemn child sex abuse in churches, and B, They've made comments in support or defense of child exploitation themselves. And considering the reality that every accusation is a confession, I think it's safe to say that conservatives, at the very least, aren't the best messengers here. And the question is, why do conservatives want to distract all of us from actual instances of child abuse that's going on in this country? Systematic instances of abuse within institutions that's been a problem for decades. I mean, you can say it's bigotry, sure, that's the large portion of why they're doing this, I think, but at least some of these conservatives, it just seems like maybe they're trying to convince you that queer people are groomers, so nobody suspects them. Regardless, the word groomer has meaning, and it's an important word. And conservatives have either wittingly or unwittingly assisted actual pedophiles by incorrectly applying that word to LGBTQ plus people. So if they actually cared about kids, they would stop and be clear. If you don't like queer people, that's fine. I mean, it's bad and I'll disagree with you and advocate for the rights of marginalized people, but you can just say that you don't think that queer people should be equal without the pretense of, well, I want to protect children. Because that's not a good look coming from you especially. Because the louder that you scream about other people having an issue, that tells us that maybe we should actually be a little bit skeptical of you. So if you hate queer people, just say that. But drop the bullshit because we all know that you don't care about children.